So, a, a real pleasure to take a call, uh, as uh, one of the early speakers said, coming towards the end of this 2010 estimates debate. And, Mr Speaker, since uh, May the 20th, I've been following this estimates debate with some interest, for both within the House and uh, from my officer. And I've got to say that having followed the debate uh, since Budget Day, I'm as proud today of the budget that Bill English delivered on May the 20th as I was then. And in fact, I could even say that I'm, I'm prouder still of it, because over that time, sir, we've all had a chance to get out into our communities, to talk to our constituents, to listen to our communities, and to hear what they're saying about how this budget's going to affect them. And the message that we're getting through to us loud and clear is that this budget is giving them a fair deal, it's giving them a reason to get ahead, and it's giving them reason to hope in the future of this country. And that, sir, is what this government came into power to give. That's what we came here to deliver. That's what we're committed to delivering. And we know it's going to take some substantial change to do it. But, sir, this budget is a substantial part of where we want to see New Zealand go. We are aspirational for this country. We are ambitious. We want to see New Zealanders have higher incomes, better jobs, higher standards of living, and the sorts of social services that we all aspire to. Sir, the cost of that is economic growth. Economic growth is what the national-led government is committed to delivering to this country, and economic growth, sir, is what this budget 2010 is all about. Before I turn to look at some of the detail of, of the budget and the estimates uh, debate we're discussing this evening, what I want to do is just take a minute to recap the challenges that New Zealand was facing uh, when this national-led government came into power, because those challenges, sir, are still the pressing issues that this budget is very much addressing. What we had, sir, was a productive sector that had been in decline consistently since 2000. That's a frightening statistic. Since 2000, our productive sector had been steadily declining. As a country, we were continually spending more than we earned. We saw rapid, spending, uh, rapid growth in government spending and yet scarily fewer frontline outcomes for New Zealanders. The net crown debt was forecast to peak at around 70% of GDP and the household sector, sir, was routinely described as being consumptive-focused and debt-driven. And because of that, we were looking at a balance of payment deficit of over 8% of GDP. And our biggest single vulnerability was our external liabilities, focused to be around $168 billion or 90% of our GDP. So with that sort of external indebtedness, we were facing debt servicing that was strangling uh, the little life that was left in the economy. I don't think it's overstating it to say that without some drastic intervention, we were teetering on the precipice of being the sort of economy we now see Greece as being. The sort of economy where actually world markets say, we're not going to keep lending to you. Actually, we're not just going to keep throwing money into that pit while you keep spending. Until we have some confidence in where your economy is going, then no, we're not going to keep lending to New Zealand. And if we hadn't made some pretty important changes and some pretty serious changes both in last year's budget and continuing through into now, we could, find our, we could have found ourselves very easily in the situation that Greece and other European countries are now looking at. So what this government needed to do, sir, is protect the entitlements of New Zealanders, soften the harshest edges of the recession, and while doing that, get New Zealand back onto the path to growth. We needed to reprime that economic pump and get a handle on government spending and debt levels while we did it. So we needed to address the fact that our best and brightest were continually leaving our shores. That wasn't acceptable to us. We didn't want New Zealand to be a place where you grew up and you left to get ahead. Most New Zealanders wanted to have their grandchildren and their children here in New Zealand, not saying, actually, there's nothing for us, we've got to go. We wanted New Zealand, and we still do, to be a place where New Zealanders want to live, they want to get ahead, and there is a future for them here, Ms Ture. We didn't want a country where we're all made as poor as each other, but as long as it was equal, no one cared. We've actually got greater aspirations than that, and we're not ashamed to stand up for them. So this budget was a major step on our plan to get our economy away from debt and away from consumption and towards saving and investment, where there were aspirations, where there was hope. We wanted to address this not just in the public sector but also in the private sector. But in the public sector, let's look at some of the th things that this budget addressed and how we were going to change that culture of inefficiency, debt-driven, overspending uh, and rising debt levels. So what that means to this government and what you're seeing in this budget is things like a lid on new spending. 
We signalled last year we were committing to a cut, uh, to, a, to a, a, a new spending cap of 1.1 billion. That was signalled to our core crown agencies, and we're living within that. We saw last year two billion of poor quality spending being reprioritised to frontline outcomes for New Zealanders, and this budget, sir, finds another 1.8 billion. So that's 3.8 billion dollars of poor quality spending that Bill English and John Key have now reprioritised into real frontline services for New Zealand that will get this country growing. Sir, it's about spending more than ever on the health sector. Can I repeat that? Because I think members of this House opposite fail to accept that. We are spending more money than ever into the health sector. Health is the biggest single area of new spending if the numbers don't add up to you, get a new calculator. We are spending more money than ever in the health sector. Now, that doesn't fit in very well with the Labour at Stump Speech, but the fact is it's true, and I'm sorry if that upsets uh, their uh, brochures, but we are spending more money than ha ever in health. And we're putting another 4% into the operational grants for schools. Now, I can tell you a 4% increase into the ops grants for schools is going to make a significant difference. So even though we're in this period of fiscal restraint and having to live within the cap on new spending, an extra 4% is going into school's operational grants. Sir, it's about delivering better, smarter public services. It is about getting more for less. And it's about imposing on the government books the sort of fiscal discipline, the sort of efficiency drives that businesses in this country have been living with year on year. Sir, frankly, government spending was getting fat, it was getting lazy, and we came in and said it's time for the government sector to live up to the sort of restraint that the private economy has been working with in this country that's for far too long. So we saw endless examples under the last government of more and more money being spent and fewer and fewer outcomes. That wasn't good enough, and that's the sort of poor quality spending that this budget addresses. It's about delivering better balance sheet management. Now, there's a phrase you haven't heard too often in government expenditure. But, sir, the government is the largest holder of assets in the country. We're talking about over $217 billion of assets. And if we're not managing those assets well, how is this economy going to get ahead? If we can't manage our ship, if we can't get our assets performing, how can we expect that of the economy? So this government, sir, is demanding better from its, its uh, government-owned assets. We are starting to see a significant improvement now coming through. And what, is the, what do those sorts of changes and that sort of discipline mean? Well, I'll tell you one of the things they mean. I mentioned earlier in my contribution tonight that under Labor, core crown debt was, uh, was forecast to peak at around 70 per cent of GDP. Well, last year, Budget Sir announced that that would come down to close to 36% of GDP. Now, in this year's budget, we see that forecast to be 27% of GDP, falling away to 14% of GDP. That's the sort of fiscal discipline that is going to get this country back on track and is going to ensure we are not the next Greece. We are going to come out of this recession, Sir, better than our trading partners, is, is my estimation. We are going to come out stronger relative to the rest of the world. We are putting New Zealand back on the track to economic growth. That's what this is about, because economic growth, sir, means jobs. The 3% growth we're forecast to get for the next three years, Treasury is telling us means 170,000 new jobs for Kiwis. It means $7,000 per annum more income for Kiwi families. That's the sort of outcomes we want to be hearing about. We want to hear about better jobs, better incomes, better standards of living. That's what economic growth gives. That's what we're here to do. And I know it's a cliche, but it is about growing the pie. You can't keep cutting it. And sooner or later, you actually have to see the pool grow. That's what this budget will do. Sir, in the private sector, it's about, again, getting away from consumption, getting towards investment and saving. And the tax reform has been well gone over in this debate. That's the sort of lever that will see New Zealanders rewarded for their effort, incentivised to get ahead. We're letting New Zealanders keep more of their own money. We're saying, if you bend your back and get stuck in, we'll let you keep much more of that money, 82 and a half cents for every dollar you own, for 73% of New Zealanders, stays with you. That's half the tax that those New Zealanders were paying, sir. This, this budget from this government is a significant step to delivering New Zealanders the sort of future that we promised in 2008 and we are delivering on in 2010, and I'm very pleased to commend it.